The following teaching is possible thanks to the friends and partners of Spirit and Truth Fellowship International. Welcome once again to this, a continuing series of teachings on the uh, questions concerning the prophetic ministry. The initial question is, what is a prophet? And as we continue to explore this topic, I think you'll see that there are prophets today and you will gain better understanding on what the role of prophets is. In the last session, uh, we talked about why it is that we say a prophet is a man or woman who speaks the words of God, brings a message for God to uh, God's people. And we looked at the Hebrew words and we built the basis for that. But now there's a really good question that, that uh, many people pose, which is, are those that are called as prophets today the same as what the prophets were in the Old Testament? And I think the answer to that is both yes and no. There are definite similarities and things that prophets in the Old Testament did and that prophets in the New Testament do today. But there's also some very distinct differences. Um, in the Old Testament, remember that the Holy Spirit that those that, that acted as prophets had was on them conditionally. You know, David, when he sinned, he said, you know, oh God, please don't remove your Holy Spirit from me. And the reason he did that is because he knew that God had get placed Holy Spirit on him and could also remove it. We know that there are other instances where people had the Spirit and God did remove it. You know, I, I believe there's an instance with the King Saul, you know, where at one point he was able to access God and God had powerfully, you know, worked through Saul with the Holy Spirit on him. But then Saul sins. And there's a point where Samuel you know, rebuke Saul. And then from that point on, it's like Saul quit hearing from God. So there, there is that difference that the Holy Spirit that people had in the Old Testament was when they had it, which was conditional, it was limited. So it wasn't on in anyone or everyone. And those that did have it only had it conditionally. Now in the New Testament, when we confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and when we believe that God raised him from the dead, which is what Romans 10 verses 9 and 10 says, that at that moment, that person is saved. We believe that to be saved is, is, is in the same as you receive the gift of Holy Spirit. And it is in you, which is what Colossians says and describes as Christ in you. And this is a subject of a whole other teaching. But that's clearly a difference between the Old Testament and the New. And by the way, I would recommend if you want to learn more on this, then just search on our uh, search bar there, and you will see we have a number of teachings on the gift of Holy Spirit and uh, how that Spirit is manifested today. But one of the things that can cause a little bit of confusion is now everyone who receives the gift of Holy Spirit has the ability to manifest, to demonstrate that Spirit in nine ways. What are those ways? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 tells us that there is speaking in tongues, tongues with interpretation, prophecy, a message of knowledge, message of wisdom, discerning the spirits, faith, healing, and miracles. So those are nine very clear and distinct ways. But if you will, if you will recall, I just mentioned one of those things is prophecy. So because a, everyone has Holy Spirit and everyone can bring forth a word of prophecy, does that mean that everyone's a prophet? And the answer to that is no, because there is a difference between just bringing forth a prophetic word and having a prophetic ministry. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, that we are told that there are clearly five equipping ministry. We call them equipping because the role of them is for the perfecting of the saints. The, the word perfect, perfecting is teleos, and it means to mature, to bring saints up to a fullness. Like the teleos was the tip or tail of the dog. It's the end. In the same way, maturity is the end of the growth process. And so it's the role of five specific ministries that Jesus identifies in his body. 
Those ministries are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So prophets is a very specific equipping ministry. Now, you might ask, what would be the difference between someone who can bring forth a word of prophecy and someone who has the ministry of a prophet? Well, it's, it, it is a very clear distinction in that in any moment, God can speak to me because I have Holy Spirit and he can empower me to bring forth a prophetic message. That is not necessarily my calling or my long suit. Whereas someone who has the ministry of a prophet, it is. And you will see that the clarity of the message, the accuracy of the message, the amount of messages that they bring forth is greater. Both, like as I said, it's, it's, it's both greater and it's more accurate because that's their, if you would, their function, their job or role in the body of Christ. So in any given moment, I may bring forth a word of prophecy that can be just as accurate, just as detailed, just as powerful, yet I don't do that as often. It's not, it's, it, it, I, I think of this in the same way as, you know, I, when I was younger, uh, went through the journeymanship and was a professional carpenter. Whereas someone else may understand carpentry and may know how to use tools that doesn't necessarily make them a journeyman carpenter who has all the skills and all the training and, and is proficient in the fullness of what it is to be a carpenter. In the same way, a person can speak prophetically, but that does not mean that they're a prophet. A prophet is a today a very specific equipping ministry in the body of Christ. I also believe there's another distinction today versus in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, prophets very frequently spoke, and we read lots of words that have a very strong reproof, strong language. And in fact, those words oftentimes involve what we call cursing. And if you, not cursing in the sense of swear words, but bringing forth words that are spiritually empowered and permit things in the spiritual realm to move forward. You know, if you want to know more about the topic of, of what a curse is, then again, we have teachings on that topic too. But today, I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ limits himself to a degree in the sense of that prophets are not called to curse specifically God's people. Prophets bring forth messages that could include foretelling, uh, the telling of future events. We have uh, examples of that in the book of Acts where uh, the prophet, I believe his name was Agabus, foretold some disaster to, to come onto Paul. He took the, the belt and bound Paul's hands. We also have where famines were foretold. We have uh, today where God will give God's people a heads up about problems and things that are coming. But prophets also in the Old Testament would reprove and rebuke and, and do some things that and could bring forth some very harsh messages. That's not to say a message can't have a sense of, of uh, urgency and a sense of reproof, but they never will be cursing God's family. They will never curse God's people. In the Old Testament, God's people were servants. Today, we're his children, and that is a huge distinction. So uh, messages today, many times, will be including words of edification, exhortation, comfort. There will be reproof, but that reproof, again, will never include cursing. I, I do recall a specific instance where I had an individual who had a prophetic ministry who called and then gave words that were of a cursed nature against myself. And as I reeled back in that, I experienced it. And, and the fact of the matter is the person was, was so emotionally immersed in a situation that they thought that, you know, the typical thing is if a prophet gets mad, then they think God is mad. And this is something that, that they have to be very wary of, you know, very clear in their heart and in their intentions and what are their, this, this defining their purposes and their motives from God's motives. So again, the ministry of a prophet is a very specific assignment today, not given to everyone, only given to uh, some, 
It is given by the Lord Jesus Christ. It is one of the five equipping ministries. They operate by Holy Spirit that is in them unconditionally, not Holy Spirit that was, was placed um, on them as in the Old Testament. And the message is primarily messages of edification, exhortation, comfort, a foretelling, and, and to, to help God's people as God's children, again, not as servants of the Old Testament, and never done um, in a harsh way with the intention of bringing about a curse. So um, thank you for this, and we'll continue in the next session.